Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Bring It On. Let's return to Dargonis with Cassia and Jai. Ah, Donald von Valencius, you have returned. I hope the sacred document I entrusted to you last time has now successfully passed through the approval procedure. Remind me, what is it you needed me to do? You must have two seals of approval affixed to the document with which I furnished you. It is easily done. In the Imperium, Ministratum Servitoris have been performing the duties of certification officers for more than 150 cycles already. You will find one such servitor here on Dargonis in the Rogue Trader's Palace. The second is duty bound to keep the seal in the Telecos Epsilon system. Remind me, who are you? I'm the Master of Seals, the only one in your protectorate for that matter. The old woman sighs warily, and carefully wipes her fogged ocular lenses with a trembling hand. I am the Law, and I oversee order in this section of the Kronos Expanse, as well as on worlds of the Von Valencius Protectorate, in accordance with ancient covenants made with your ancestors. I hold the powers to grant petitioners what they seek, and to punish criminals for failing to carry out the Imperium's will. Now here is your paper, complete with seals. The ocular lenses on the old woman's nose emit a subtle hum as she adjusts the magnification. Yes, oh yes indeed, it is perfect. The seals are authentic, so we may continue with the certification procedure. Follow me, please. Yeah, I figured that would be the end of it. We're probably just getting started. I wonder if they're going to make us wait in line. I'm not sure that they would do it, but it would be funny if they made us wait for years to get it done. Or we just get it started now, and we don't actually get the certificate until the epilogue. Uh, this is your queue, and your ticket number is... The old woman's ocular lenses hum as she zooms in on the paper in her hand. 394. When it is your turn to be seen, the ranking prefect will review your documentation again and sign the official certification for Jai Haidari to possess a Mercatum Tabula Officiali. You will have a bit of a wait, but it will be worth it in the end, yes? Is this some kind of joke? The Master of Seals peers at you over her ocular lenses. Hardly. In accordance with Decree DA-58, Clause 201, citizens of the capital world of the Von Valencius Protectorate must submit their petitions at one of the assigned windows of the waiting hall. The decree makes no mention of the rogue trader being exempt from this rule. My name is widely known long before I became a rogue trader. People like me do not queue. Wherever we go, doors are thrown open wide for us and the red carpet rolled out. Dumbfounded by your speech and splendor, the petitioners around you freeze, open-mouthed. Of course, the fame of your deeds has reached the walls of this temple of the Imperium's law and will. And yet the Lex Imperialis... The expression on the Master of Seals' face undergoes an indescribable metamorphosis. Various moral impulses are warring within her, her lips moving soundlessly. Then she nods several times to herself. The old woman wrinkles her nose like she has tasted something unpleasant. I suppose I could make an exception, but only because Theodora von Valencius never once overlooked the laws of the Imperium or my advice. Here. She holds out a new ticket with the number 301. May his blessing be upon you. 
<laughs> but we skipped 93 spots. That's cool, that was unique dialogue for the origin I selected. Keep your wits about you. And it played a role in a quest. The crowd hums and surges like the sea in foul weather. The smell of unwashed bodies, ancient parchment, and ink assaults your nose. For many petitioners, this is not their first cycle waiting to be seen. I can't I do that yet. Keep my options open. Bundles of wires have been ripped out of the servitor's neck. The yellow fluid is seeping from its damaged joints. How angry would a person have to be to do this? I always have a backup plan. Is there money to be made? My task list for current work turn. 1. Compose an order for the servitorization of 90% of the population of asteroid mining station VMK-498 for the purposes of increasing productivity. 2. Prepare a set of documents for the reclassification of the world Vibo 6 as a penal colony on the orders of her ladyship Theodora von Valencius. 3. Task the newly appointed adepts of the Administratum with conducting a review of all unresolved petitions in the last 5,999 cycles. 4. Make a big mug of recap. I'm sure I've touched on it before, but recap is coffee Rise to the top, and uh, 40k. Or get left in the dust. Always keep your eye on the prize. Oh, there it is. Addendum number 32-4 to addendum number 874-BA7 to document NXC 4026-82. Uh, some amount, I, I'm going to assume 40 regiments of the Astra Militarum sent to the frozen world of Xenogar 2. Required supplies of warm clothing, footwear, and snowshoes for a successful combat maneuver with a further offensive against the enemies of humanity and the Emperor. Due to a gross error by a low-ranking adept of the Astra Administratum, instead of the aforementioned supplies, soldiers received 800 cryobanks, resulting in the death by freezing of the majority of troops before the commencement of the mission of retribution. For the purposes of improving efficiency, the adept responsible was subjected to servitude and perpetuous, as a result of which he is now discharging his duties flawlessly. We have Minas here, who we can't speak to. Keep your wits about you. At least not yet. All right, take your place in the queue. The queue hums with thousands of voices. Someone has rolled out bedding and is setting down to sleep. Someone is playing some bizarre musical instrument. Many are praying. Several highborn petitioners are debating who is here on the most important business. You have to admit. Magnificent administrative machinery of the Imperium isn't without its rough edges. Jai smiles sheepishly, eyeing the queue. What a thrilling adventure this is turning out to be, Shireen. I've never seen anything like it before. And sometimes it's good to take a break from constant traveling, and to give all the hot-blooded newcomers a chance to cover themselves in glory without us in the way. Uh, count the people in queue. The people are constantly moving, coming and going, Changing places, or simply disappearing from view. On your first attempt, you count 238 petitioners. On your second attempt, you count 244. On your third attempt, the next batch of unlucky souls is ushered into the hall, and you lose count. Now scratch the back of your neck. You've wild away 30 seconds of your wait. <laughs> you wonder how long you have left to go. Yawn. Minutes drag by intolerably slow. Somewhere in the queue, a child is howling, sorry, howling, at the top of its lungs. The palace adepts are sedately moving documents from one pile to another, shuffling papers. Several petitioners have gathered in a huddle and are swapping rumors, while someone has laid down for a nap on a nearby bench. 
Hi, uh, order your servants to prepare a waiting area befitting a rogue trader. You feel the envious eyes of the other petitioners upon you, but no one dares to do anything more than stare. Wait patiently. In the last eight hours, the only thing that has changed in the waiting hall is the warden shift. The petitioners in the queue placidly await the blessed hour when their appeal will be heard by the high-ranking servants of the Imperium. The entire queue perks up at a sudden announcement. Number 285, proceed to the available window. Throne take me. What torturous trial have we let ourselves in for? Jai almost wails in despair. So much precious time lost. We only move three places ahead. At this rate, we'll be old and gray before we get out of this queue, Shireen. You have a better idea. You wound me, Shireen. Jai Hadari always has a better idea. What do you say to making the good folk ahead of us hurry up a little? Just a smidge. Her eyes dart playfully over the faces of the people around you. The simplest way is to make these lowly subjects bow down before the blinding radiance of our title, Shireen. The second option requires a little more... patience. I've already found our first vict... Ah, a compassionate citizen who is standing 50 places ahead of us in the queue. Simply offer the right words to unlock his heart, and he'll gladly swap tickets with you. And also, you have the power to solve the problems of some petitioners, removing their need to visit a coveted window. After all, is there anything an ordinary citizen would want that is beyond the power of the Conqueror of the Stars to, uh, to grant? Alright, uh, we shall solve the problems of the common people. A wise decision, Shireen. Old traders always say, you'd solve a problem with hard cash. And that's just the cost of doing business. Jai gives you a conspiratorial wink and backs away slightly. Oh, exalted one, could today be my lucky day? No longer will I have to stand in this hall, waiting day and night for my turn to come. For this kind lord of House Von Valantius is a benefactor of the downtrodden. He has solved my problem. Esteem Lord, take pity on this poor youth as well. I will give you everything I have, I swear before the Emperor. Only help me solve my problem. We do not need everything, poor wretch. Only your place in the queue. Listen to the young man. The young man in worn work overalls comports himself with, a, with unusual grace for a commoner. My Lord, I have been in this queue for two dozen moons already. Try to get a permission slip to wed my fiance Zazi. Unfortunately, the servants of the administratum refused to grant it without the signature of a highborn sponsor. Out of my way. Elbowing aside onlookers left and right, a richly dressed lady with a beauty mark augment above her lip charges toward you. Esteem Lord, my eighth offspring has lost his mind. He has decided to renounce his family, his noble title, and his talent as a healer. All for the sake of some tattered way from the middle levels. A union with a commoner will put an end to his studies at the university. But should Dargonis and the Officio Medici be deprived of a capable Turrigen because of a passing fancy? Zazi's a healer too, and she helps the people of the Hive a great deal more than any lily white Turrigen with a diploma. I do not want to live a life of idleness in the spires of Dargonis like you, not when I know there are thousands of unfortunate people in the lower levels who need my help. I wonder if option one is the best roleplay wise. I have no interest in your little drama. I'll sign the paper if you require a sponsor. I uh, thank you, my lord. I promise I'll tell my children and my children's children of your kindness. You have an interesting way of doing business, Shireen. I'll keep that in mind. Jai's shrewd eyes are alight with interest, 
as she watches the young petitioner leave. After allowing you a brief pause, a hunched ragamuffin approaches you. The old man's toothless mouth breathes out a putrefying cloud of air as he speaks only three words. Death for life. Jai peers over the man's shoulder to read his crumpled form. You are here to request mortification. The organs go to your granddaughter as an inheritance. She will hardly want your worn out body parts, old timer. The ragged man shakes his head and covers his face with his wrinkled hands. Servitor. Disposal. Only now do you notice the tattoo on his right hand, the symbol of the Adeptus Administratum, and several interlocking chains. It seems this old fellow is the property of a prefect of this palace. Jai looks at the man's form again, and rears back in horror. The granddaughter of this poor wretch was turned into a servitor 16 Dargonus years ago, and after a recent accident, she was listed for disposal. Now this old man is volunteering to be spare parts for a soulless tin can. May the Exalted One keep me from such a fate. Your sacrifice will be nothing to a servitor. You do realize that. The old man's toothless mouth opens in pain, seemingly splitting his face in two. The salty tears well in his time-worn eyes. You do not have to die, old man. She's been taken out of service, and the time has come to release her. I don't know. Option 4 might be the most dogmatic, but it, I know, it's too cruel, so I'm going to go with option 2. The man covers his face with his hands, and shakes with soundless sobs. Past time. Interesting. So that's how the ruler of worlds and all the stars in the sky acts when he finds an unfortunate on the edge of his magnificent orbit. Jai nods pensively and beckons the next petitioner forward. A mature woman in a finely made but threadbare dress greets you. I heard you were helping those in need. Well, my family. It's devastated. My life's work. Oh, my shop selling rare hats burnt to ashes. I'm living out my last years as a widow. Alone in a cold, deserted manner, without servants, diversions, or delicacies befitting my status. The woman falls silent, her brow raised in expectation of your response. Ah, here we go. And what you want is a life that is meaningless and full of despair. Perhaps it is time you return to Faith, sister. The woman's eyes go round in surprise. Why, I think you're right. What do I want with a tumble-down manor house full of rats? And a depressing view from the window. My whole life I have dreamt of interplanetary travel. A pilgrimage, that's it. I'll sell the house and what's left of the shop. And I'll buy a one-way ticket. And Emperor willing, I'll die happy before my savings run out. Well, that was... amusing. I paid off the last few onlookers who are willing to give up their place. It's a pity they aren't all so amendable. Jai inspects the tickets she now holds and nods with satisfaction. Move forward considerably in the queue, Shireen. You aren't ready to stop there, are you? I'll be honest, Shireen. I already tried to convince Heinrichs to use his interrogator's rosette. With sweet words and pretty songs, I cajoled and wheedled. But he remains unmoved, like a rock whipped by the wings. Perhaps he will be more amenable to a request from you. Sister Argenta, for instance. Jai's voice becomes noticeably warmer. She could engage the people in a prayer, or tell a story about some saint or other in exchange for their queue tickets. Uh, we need to move forward faster. Use your tricks. I prefer to call it my wisdom learned through many years' experience. 
but I don't care about the precise wording just now. How do you wish to proceed, Shireen? Uh, Sister Argenta, I believe these people have been gripped by despondency. A sermon from one of his daughters could restore them to their determination. You were thinking about it as well. Argenta's gaze is as clear as the midday sky. Words of faith can heal any wound, even those that bleed not but doubt. I will help these people. Come closer, brothers and sisters. I'm about to tell you about true faith and humility in the face of adversity. One day, they appealed to Saint Justina. As they say on Ifrit, there's no star more coveted than that which points to the Exalted One. Jai casts a sidelong glance at the Sister of Battle, as the latter holds out several numbered tickets to you. These were given to me in thanks by the poor souls who decided to abandon their vigil in this palace of the law and return to their worldly matters. We've been forward considerably in the queue, Shireen. But you aren't ready to stop there, are you? Uh, Heinrichs, this is a perfect opportunity to make use of your privileged status. After all, you do not wish to suspend your mission for several cycles, do you? Casting his eyes over the waiting hall, Heinrichs heaves a resigned sigh. It would be unpardonable, unpardonable to waste so much time here. In the name of the Holy Inquisition, I order you to let this lord through. It is your sacred duty to the Imperium to comply. Inquisition, here. Emperor, save us. I better come back in 20 moons. Here. Is this what you were so desperate to obtain? Heinrich holds out three Q tickets dropped by petitioners fleeing the very sight of the interrogator. Do not ask me to resort to such tricks again. The hum of activity returns to the queue. Petitioners exchange glances, clutching their paperwork. After a few seconds, you realize that the number being called out by our servo skull for the third time is the one on your ticket. Oh, exalted one. Thank you for granting the rogue trader his sacred warrant and all its privileges. If we had to wait a minute longer, heaven be my witness, I would have shot someone. Well, that went faster than I expected. We had a little bit of a wait, of course. But at times, it was actually fun. Jai smiles warily. One last seal, one more certification, and... You'll be looking at an official trade representative, Jay Haidari. Uh, what are you waiting for, Shireen? Let's go. We have another couple of hours with the certification officer to get through. The certification officer leans over the document, his smoothly shaven head gleaming. His augmented ocular eyes were, as the lenses zoom in and out. With quiet scratching sounds, the cogita quills that serve in place of the officer's fingers make notes on a fine sheet of paper. The document is hereby certified, says the rasping voice through the metal jaw with its integrated vox. Return to the Master of Seals in order to proceed. May his light and wisdom guard you. Next. I always keep my options open. Well, let's see if we're actually done now. I suspect not, but... Maybe we are. The Temple of Law and Order greets you, Donald Von Valancius. You've returned with all the necessary paperwork, I presume. Here, all of the seals placed by a certification officer. Wonderful. The Emperor blessed you with patience greater than that apportioned to ordinary mortals. Allow me to verify the authenticity of your documents for the final time. The old woman holds the documents close so that they are almost touching her nose. Her mechanical ocular lenses clicking incessantly. Yes, yes, confirmed. Everything is in order, and this one. Ah, the seal smudged slightly. 
A shy smile evaporates, revealing her true emotions. Void scorpion scratch out my eyes. Now what? Hmm. I suppose I can overlook it, given that the rest has been certified correctly and promptly. Congratulations, Jai Haidari. You are now the holder of a Mercatum Tabula Officiali. Do not forget to repeat the certification process every 100 Terran cycles. Uphold the law of the Imperium proudly and honorably in the words of the Cronus Ex sorry, the worlds of the Cronus Expanse. And one more thing. The loss of this certificate is a grievous transgression, Mistress Hidari. Lose the original document, and you'll be unable to regain your status as an official trade representative. Not even with the rogue trader's endorsement. Yes, yes, esteemed Damar. Give me the certificate already. Come on. Ajaya's eyes dart over the Mercatum Tabula Officiali and shine with delight. Praise the exalted one who saw through who saw me through all these trials, Shireen. This is something to tell the grandchildren about. A humble mortal became a trade representative of the Imperium. Let's not bother the Damar any longer, Shireen. Why don't we discuss our next steps on the ship? Is there money to be made? Light of my eyes, give her a boons and savior of the needy. From now on, two sons will grace the firmament of the Fon Valencius Protectorate. One bright and powerful, like the rogue trader himself, and the other slightly more humble, like his unassuming partner, the diligent owner of the Mercatum Tabula Officiale, and all around the light, Jai Hidari. Jai Haidari tenderly holds the piece of script-covered parchment, like a young mother nursing her newborn child. As I promised before, my crew will be your eyes and ears across the entire expanse, Sherin. Just give them time. And of course, the assistant to official trade representative Jai Haidari is already rushing to Dargonis to deliver goods of rare and exquisite quality to you and your people, O master of many worlds. And once again, Thank you, Sherin. From the bottom of my humble heart. Jai's eyes shine playfully, the perpetual half-light of the bridge. Lose this piece of paper. I will not help you get another. Throne be my witness. Nothing will make me part with this treasure, Sherin. May the Exalted One be my witness. Him and all the stars in the expanse that shine like a handful of pearls scattered across the dark velvet of the galaxy. I only have one last question to ask. Jai flashes a conspiratorial smile, leans forward, and shamelessly holds your gaze, completely ignoring the disapproving looks of the surrounding officers as she waits for your reply. I kiss her. How can I resist such temptation? I hope you don't mind. Oh, I most definitely am not opposed, Sherin. Jai greedily kisses you to the indignant mur murmurs of your audience. Excuse me. Too much reading, I'm starting to fall apart. The sweetness of your lips, Sherin, clouds the mind better than Calixian wine on a balmy day. But you did not think I would just let you go, did you? A humble gift in return for all the trouble. May the Exalted One keep watching over the path that you tread. Jai's cheeks flush like a ripe peach, and her eyes shine even brighter than usual as she hands you a small parcel. Oh, I have no doubt you will. Battle-scarred cape. Ajai laughs and bids you farewell with a wink. And we got... Battle-scarred cape. When the wearer ends their turn, they remove burning, bleeding, and toxin-negative effects from themselves and all adjacent allies. The wearer gains toughness bonus divided by two temporary wounds for each negative effect removed that way. Interesting. What does he have?
I like the dodge chance. And I don't think anyone else would really benefit from that, so we won't use it. You are spoiling me with the splendor of your presence again, Sherin. Have you decided to treat your soul to the fruits of my eloquence? Or do you wish to discuss business with the newly appointed owner of a Mercatum Tabula Officiale? A dry smile shines brighter than any star you have seen. Oh, I... Oh, we're too short. Well, we get the Fortis Pattern Torpedo Tubes. Shoots uh, four short burning metal torpedoes with 27 damage warheads. Which is a direct downgrade to what we currently have equipped. Well, we can go to the Von Valencia's Palace with Cassia and meet with her family. Alright, I'm going to call it here, and next time we'll meet with uh, Cassia's relatives. And deal with her companion quest. And then we can head towards Vibo 6. But for now, well actually, before we go to Vibo 6... I want to return to Footfall at some point, and get more Profit Factor. So we've probably visited enough planets to increase it by at least two. So we get the other equipment from the Imperial Navy. But I'll probably do Vivo 6 first. Either way, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.